good evening, this is Houndog Steve, wishing you a very pleasant evening and a very warm welcome back to my channel. And a great shout out to anyone who is new this evening. Please uh, grab a chair, sit down, uh, get yourself a cup of tea, a cup of coffee or whatever beverage you choose. And uh, let's have a little conversation about social media censorship. And I'm sure that you've all been seeing the censorship that's being rolled out across uh, basically all social media platforms now. And it has been absolutely brutal. And many good reporters have been caught up in this purge. Um, you know, Sargon of Akkad uh, comes to mind. Uh, Paul Joseph Watson um, is another one. But there are also many young reporters who have come out of journalism school or university. Uh, they're having difficulty finding work or breaking into mainstream media, which of course is struggling in its own realm. And uh, so they've got their own website now, they've got their own channel, and they're being caught up in something which is actually very very unfair and it is draconian and it is extremely dangerous but we will get to that in a minute uh, now most of these people and uh, now there's been some speculation that it is mostly right-wing or conservative thinkers that have been um, deplatformed but i think it's actually anybody who is very inconveniently pointing out the clear and demonstrable double think that is taking place in society today. Um, you know, are there two genders or are there 72 genders? Uh, we seem to have inclusivity, which is actually exclusive. And we have diversity, which doesn't seem to be very diverse at all. And to try and make any kind of sense of this uh, is absolutely impossible. And the algorithms which they are using, the AI that they're using to censor on these platforms are clumsy at best and an absolute disaster at worst. They have no idea of what context is, what nuance is, what humour is, what sarcasm is. Uh, they are going basically by the, the word value and that is it. And it's not just the social media platforms that are getting in on this. We are getting into a situation where the financial institutions are now refusing to work with people who've been deplatformed on Twitter or YouTube or whatever. And um, so you can't use your Visa, you can't use your MasterCard. And that is incredibly disenfranchising because now you can't function in society. We are internet based. Just about everything you can think of on the internet is uh, a credit card of some kind or Bitcoin or some kind of alt currency, but you cannot use cash in the internet. And cash is becoming uh, more and more difficult to find or to use in, gen in the general public. Now, not only is this draconian, it is extremely dangerous. And we're going to get into that a little later. But first, uh, the internet is not owned by Google. The internet is not owned by YouTube or Microsoft or Facebook. Okay, and here is a definition of who owns the internet. And it is nobody or no single organization. It is communally owned. It is in the public. It is a public space. It is owned by all of us and none of us at the same time. Okay, so the internet is a public space and they host public figures. Uh, warnings, uh, public safety and awareness programs, uh, just about every town, village and city has a Facebook page and uh, this is where people go to take a look at uh, what's on that page and to interact with the people who are posting things uh, wherever they may be. Uh, just about every news show, uh, CNN, Fox, MSNBC, CBC, all have a website and they use the internet to interact with the public. And the CBC, of course, is a publicly owned institution. This is truly a public space. Okay, so without the internet, the social media just doesn't work. None of these platforms can function without the internet. And that is why the Constitution and freedom of speech applies to them and their corporation. Even though it's a private corporation, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can imagine what would happen if Google could not access the internet. What kind of a search engine would Google have if it couldn't access the internet? And as we've just seen, Google does not own the internet. Okay, so when you fall into the internet, whoever uses the internet, you fall into a commons, a public space where everyone 
has to follow the same rules and those rules include freedom of speech and of course we do see that because uh, there is a different search engine from Google for China uh, and Europe and Britain and of course the interesting thing about that is you will never know because they just don't come up in your search and uh, you know anyone who's scrolled down to the 10th or the even the 20th page of a Google search you can just go on forever as I say they just remove that particular item from the search engine and uh, there you go it's gone it's invisible and that's what they do for each particular country and as it seems at the request of the government so who are these platforms these corporations to arbitrarily decide along with the government what is allowable and what is not what is hate speech what is bullying uh, what are good words what are bad words what are good ideologies and what are bad ideologies uh, you know I might point out that Facebook recently banned uh, the Constitution the Declaration of Independence as hate speech and also the word honk uh, so let's see we have a government and social media everywhere spying on us uh, following us wherever we go listening to our conversations through Alexa and Siri and what have you and supposedly holding us to a higher standard uh, they are deciding what words we can use what we can say what bullying is what hate is and, and all of these things are not clearly defined they're very much laid open to interpretation by anybody and that is probably the most dangerous aspect of this uh, there is such a thing as hate speech there's absolutely no doubt about that and hate speech is when you are inciting an individual or a crowd to actually go and commit violence against an individual or persons that is hate that's when you cross the border from just your um, out there opinion and you've gone into hate speech uh, when they are inciting people to go and commit violence that's it other than that it is just an opinion and if it may be offensive you may not like it but it is simply another person's opinion okay so a quick question don't you think that this is really creepy it's really creepy that you can be cut off from internet use from banking use uh, possibly uh, not be able to get a job or because you had a different opinion from the narrative and don't you think that it's really creepy that these ruling elites, these leaders of ours, do all of this behind a cloak of their own secrecy, behind locked doors where you can't communicate with them? Try contacting Facebook or Google or YouTube or Twitter and see if you get a reply. It just goes into space. I have yet to receive a reply from any of these platforms when I have tried to uh, contact them over videos that I've had issues with or been demonetized, that kind of stuff. Oh no. They either remonetize it or they don't. And uh, that is that and all about it. It's all done in secrecy. And it's kind of interesting that every despot in history, from Caligula to Idi Amin, have used this tactic to silence dissent. Whilst at the same time, without any hint of irony, extolling the virtue, transparency, integrity and looking out for the best interests of the people and protecting the people from all kinds of dangers that might be out there in the big wide world. Oh yes, they tell us they have an absolute dedication to public service and that is their entire motive. Uh, I would suggest you remember that. It might just be important. And yes, I know there are some very out there people and groups with very distasteful ideas and disgusting ideologies. Absolutely no doubt I'd be the first to agree with you. However, these people and these groups are in a minority. And that's important to note. They are a minority. And they are being used as the tool to help you to shut yourself down on the internet. They're going to use your hate and anger against these groups to get you to agree to basically all kinds of outrageous censorship on the internet. And when this is fully rolled out, that's when you realize what you've done. So I'd like to point out here that this, uh, what I'm talking about here, is actually counterintuitive. 
Now, you may be thinking that to do something like this, to basically let it go, to not police it too harshly, uh, would be encouraging this kind of behaviour on the internet. But, as I said, it is counterintuitive. And let me give you an example. Okay, We all know that alcoholism is bad. It is dangerous. It is not good for your health. Uh, it kills many of its abusers. It's addictive and it is extremely seductive. Uh, we've accepted that it is a very dangerous substance and must be used with care. Okay, so why aren't we all alcoholics? We could be. It's right there. There's a liquor store on every corner of just about every town uh, or off-license if you're in the UK. Uh, alcohol is ubiquitous. It's absolutely everywhere. And of course, you know the answer to the question. And that is that being an alcoholic is a pretty unproductive way of going about business and uh, it's not a very pleasant kind of lifestyle. And as I say, with all the risks associated, um, most of us are just not attracted to that kind of thing. So only a very small minority of people do actually become alcoholics. And so we found out that it's safe to have these very dangerous substances kept in buildings and have open access to every single member of the public and the only people we protect are people who are under the age of 21 or minors and of course that is absolutely correct and of course you know we see this with everything else I mean how many people really truly are running off to sign up in a war in some far flung part of the world I don't think too many certainly not myself are you so there you go. Uh, I, I think we should cut some slack here. I think we should allow freedom of speech to happen. I think that you will find, like the liquor stores, because we tried prohibition, and when we tried prohibition, it got worse. It didn't get better. It got worse. Everything, in fact, everything that we've tried to control like this has gotten worse, not better. So moral outrage doesn't work. So maybe this time we could learn our lesson and we could allow free speech and other people's opinions, a variety, a complete variety of opinions to take place in this public sphere and let the public decide what is good and bad. And as I say, just like the liquor store situation, I think you'll find that the vast majority of people will shy away from these kind of groups and they will either stay the size that they are or they will shrivel up and just disappear of their own accord because you know, hate is just not a very attractive thing. It's very unproductive. You know, it takes up a lot of energy. And uh, so, it, you know, it's just not, it, yeah. You know what I'm talking about, right? And of course, the other counterintuitive thing is that the more that you try and control speech, the more power you give to these groups. Okay, they go underground and the censorship legitimizes the existence of the group. And uh, not only have you given these individuals or groups a cause, uh, you probably encourage more people who are sitting on the fence to join that group or be one of those individuals because of the draconian censorship and unfair censorship. You know, YouTube is going to censor people who don't break the rules but come close to breaking the rules. I mean, that is total BS. Come on, get real. Uh, you know, that, that basically means anything you can say, anything you can say is open to being uh, uh, shut down. Okay, so there are a couple of really big issues here. Is that the people who are trying to control speech are using this as a tool. They don't care whether you are liberal or conservative, Republican or Democrat. They are going to use whatever path leads them to power and control. So the control of speech and language is not to protect you. It is to protect them. That is the whole point of this. Okay? And it's really dangerous. This is a dangerous part of this. It is because all speech is potentially hate speech. From whatever side it comes from. We only have one shared language. So vilification words look the same from whatever side they are said. By falling for this trap, 
you are inadvertently shutting down your own free speech. This is why it is important for us all to demand freedom of speech, even if it's offensive. Remember, uh, if you are a liberal and you think that shutting down conservative speech is a good thing, remember that should the conservatives be elected, that, that rule will still be in place because you thought it was only going to be applied to the conservatives. But I guarantee you that the conservatives or the NDP will apply it to you just as readily. Okay? Because this is a big agenda. And this is one of the biggest parts of that agenda is to control language, control speech. And to get you to agree to control your own speech. Now, as an example of that, under this arbitrary regime, you know, talk of smoking would have been banned as hate speech. Pesticides, DDT, women's rights, women's suffrage. Can you imagine the Twitter fest that would have happened over Emily Pankhurst in 1907 when she chained herself to the gates of Buckingham Palace for women's suffrage? Oh my God, she would have been shut down immediately for being offensive because it would have been considered offensive back then. Remember, all of these things that we have, all of these rights, all of these freedoms that we already have, were won by people who offended somebody. They pushed forward an idea that was offensive and it only the fact that we had freedom of speech, that even though it was offensive to someone, they were allowed to say what they had to say. Can you imagine, as I say, if people who wanted to stop smoking were shut down, we'd be still coughing our way through day after day. So I would suggest that we please be very, very careful what we wish for. We might just get it. Okay, well, if you've enjoyed this video, please like, comment and subscribe below. And uh, in the meantime, this is Handlock Steve signing off. Wishing you a very pleasant evening and we will talk very, very shortly. You take care now. Bye.